In this video, I'm going to give you a main progression guide for Elden Ring. I'll be recommending where to go and roughly when to go there. I will do this guide as spoiler free as humanly possible. Most of the time, we're just going to be on the world map and I'll be giving you directions on where to go. I will be mentioning the bosses' names, but I won't actually be showing the bosses. And I'll be giving hints, tips, and recommendations along the way. My name is Azavar or Azza. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so first of all, we start at the first step. And the first area that I recommend exploring is Limgrave which is essentially the entirety of this area just here. Then the intended route with Limgrave is to work your way up Storm Hill and into the castle until you eventually get to the castle tunnel. What I'd recommend doing is waiting just there. The first main boss of the game is Margit, which is just past this castle tunnel site of grace. But before taking on Margit and actually progressing through the castle, I'd recommend heading south down to the Weeping Peninsula. So the Weeping Peninsula is basically this entire island down here. I'd recommend doing as much as you can in the Weeping Peninsula first. There's a couple of tunnels that I'd recommend checking out. One is this one called Morn Tunnel and getting all the smithing stones which upgrade your weapon from inside this tunnel. And then back in Limgrave, there's also another one here called Limgrave Tunnels. There's loads of smithing stones in this one as well. Once that is done and you've explored the Weeping Peninsula down the south and you've explored the entirety of Limgrave, then head on over to Stormvale Castle. I recommend upgrading your weapons a bit before taking on Margit. Ideally, you want at least plus three weapons. It is worth mentioning that I do have boss guides for pretty much most bosses in this game, so feel free to check out my boss guide playlist if you're interested in those. Once Margit is defeated, you can then make your way through Stormvale Castle until you eventually get to the secluded cell site of Grace. And just beyond the secluded cell site of Grace, you'll find Godric the Grafted. Godric the Grafted is the first demi god boss that you'll face. After defeating Godric, you'll head out into Lyernia to this lake facing cliffs site of grace. Technically speaking, what you can do is if you're struggling with Godric or you're struggling with Margit, you can actually skip Stormvale Castle for now if you want to. So you could come down to this path, go underneath this bridge, over this bridge here, jump across onto this cliff side. You'll follow this hill up and this cliff across until you eventually get to the lake facing cliffs and then you can access Lyernia that way. However, I would recommend taking on Stormvale Castle and Godric first of all before taking on Lyernia. There is a really useful shield at this merchant here called the Kite Shield, which has 100% physical damage negation. And that Kite Shield is insanely useful for blocking attacks from Godric and also Margit. So you could run around, grab this Kite Shield and then head on back to take on Stormvale Castle. After you defeated Godric, you will get his Great Rune, but it won't be activated when you first get it. And I would recommend activating Godric great rune because it is quite useful so to activate the great rune you'll need to go to this divine tower in stormvale castle head to this bridge section here and then just follow this great bridge all the way across until you get to the divine tower at the end activate godric's great rune at this divine tower it is worth mentioning that after you've activated godric's great rune you then have to equip it at a site of grace and you also have to use an item called a rune arc to then get the benefits of that great rune so once that's all done the next place we should tackle is lyonia of the lakes which is the entirety of this section just here the main boss that we need to take out in lyonia is renala who is located at the rea lucaria academy which is this place just here so in Lyonia, just make your way through the lakes up to this section until you get to South Rea Lucaria Gate. To actually open the gate and get inside of Rea Lucaria Academy, we will need a key. To get the key, you want to head west first of all, and then head north until you get to this section on the map. The key is located just here. It will be hidden behind a dragon, so what you'll need to do is either fight and defeat the dragon, or you can just crouch and go stealth and grab the key from behind the dragon and then just run away. So once you've got that key, you can then enter the Rea Lucaria Academy and go through the entirety of this section. There'll be two bosses that you need to fight in this place. One is the Red Wolf of Radagon and the other one is Renala. Once you've defeated Renala, you'll get your second Great Rune and Renala's Great Rune is actually automatically activated. So at this point, we've got two Great Runes. We've got Renala's and we also have Godric's. At this point, I recommend checking out this tunnel called Rea Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. If you ever see a section on the map where it's kind of got this weird red burnt hole section like this, it will mean that you can get a Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing, which you can actually take to the NPC at the round table, forward slash the Table of Lost Grace, and then you can unlock Smithing Stones to purchase from that shop. So you can get a Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing from this cave, and I'd recommend bagging that. 
After that, head up north and follow this path until you get to the Caria Manor. I then recommend taking on Caria Manor and defeating the boss at the end of it. The boss is located just here and she is Royal Knight Loretta. After you've done that, you can then head out the back to this section and you can talk to Rani and start a little bit of a quest line with Rani. At this point, we then have two options. So after you completed Rhea Lucaria Academy, it will give you access to this road along here. We then have the choice of going up the Grand Lift of Dectus, or we can also climb this ravine. Before proceeding any further forward, make sure you're happy with your exploration of Lyernia, Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula. So to activate and get up the Grand Lift of Dectus, we will need a medallion, which comes in two halves. The first half of the medallion is located at this fort in Limgrave, and the second half of the medallion is located at this fort in Kaelid. I wouldn't recommend doing too much exploration in Kaelid at this point, but if you wanted to head on over real quick to this fort to get the half of the medallion, then what I would recommend is heading along this path, and then you can actually jump over this ravine section on the map just here. If you check out this ravine, there should be a section where you can jump over using torrent. So once you've done that, you should head over to this path. Once you've made your way across the ravine, just follow this path across until you eventually get to the fort and then grab the half of the medallion. So that is one option. You can then go to the Grand Lift of Dectus, activate it, head on up, and you'll end up just here on the map. Or the other option to get up is to head on down to the lakes first of all, and then follow this river northeast until you eventually get to the ravine veiled village once you get to this point you then basically climb up some ladders and the side of a cliff until you eventually get to this site of grace you then head on inside and fight a boss which is a magma worm after that you'll end up at the abandoned coffin and you can head up this section just here after you've done that it will give us access to the altus plateau which is basically this section on the map what i would recommend doing before popping into the altus plateau is heading into a cave called the Abandoned Cave in Kaelid. There is a talisman at the end of the Abandoned Cave, which if you get it and equip it, will give you a 20% increase in all runes obtained from defeating enemies. This talisman is called the Golden Scarab, and I'd recommend getting it as early as you can do. If you equip it through most of your playthrough, then you'll end up being 20% stronger by the time that you get to the end of the game than what you normally would be. I do have a guide up on my channel on how to get that if you're interested. Okay, so once that's all done, head back to the Alta plateau and basically explore the vast majority of the Altus plateau which is this section of the map there is a really useful key item which once again is a smithing stone miners bell bearing to get that you would head to this tunnel called the sealed tunnel to get there just head along this path until you get to the outer wall phantom tree site of grace and then head east and then south until you get to the sealed tunnel there are two tree sentinels located just in front of this gate Technically speaking, you can just run past and then rest at the site of grace if you want to skip them. I do have a boss guide for those two if you're interested in watching it. Like I mentioned before, make sure to pop into the sealed tunnel and then get the smithing stone miners bell bearing from that tunnel. The main idea with the Altus Plateau is to follow this path from the outer wall phantom tree, go northeast, follow this around and you'll eventually head to this section. And when you do get to this section of the map, it will be guarded by a draconic tree sentinel boss. After you defeated the Draconic Tree Sentinel, you can then head into the capital city. Basically, to get access to the capital city, you will need to obtain two Great Runes, otherwise there will be a door that is blocking your way. But at this point in our progression, we have the Great Rune from Renala, and we have the Great Rune from Godric. And although we can go into the capital city, I would recommend not going in there just yet. So you need to have defeated two Demigods and have two Great Runes in order to enter the capital city. It is worth mentioning that when accessing the capital city of Lanedell for the first time, as well as having the two great runes from the demigods. I believe you have to visit the Table of Lost Grace at least once in order for the game to allow you to access the capital city. At this point, you then have the option of either heading west into Volcano Manor, which is West Altus Plateau, or you have the option of completing Kaelid and defeating the boss of Kaelid. So it's kind of up to you at this point. So either Kaelid or Volcano Manor, the choice is yours. If we do complete Kaelid, it does give us access to another area inside of Limgrave that we didn't previously have access to. So let's take a look at Kaelid. Basically with this area, you would just kind of follow this path in around and then branch off to the south until you eventually get to Red Main Castle. The boss of Kaelid is at the end of Red Main Castle. So what you could do is before progressing to the very end of Red Main Castle is you could continue to follow this pathway up through Kaelid 
do a little bit of a section here in Celia Town of Sorcery. You can access this section at the north of Caelid two ways, either by jumping over that ravine or going through this Celia Town of Sorcery and heading north from there. There are a few bosses and bits and bobs that you can do across this section, a boss on this bridge as well. And there's a little bit of a quest line that you can do at this Bestial Sanctum. Anyway, once you're happy with all that stuff, you just head to the end of Redmain Castle, which will eventually take you into this section. And then you'll have to defeat the demigod of this area, which is Radan. The entirety of this arena is Radan's arena. I do have a boss guide for Radan if you're interested. You will also get a great rune from defeating Radan. Once Radan is defeated, it will then open up a new section in Limgrave grave marked here on the map so if you want to you can then head down into that new section in Limgrave, which will actually take you underground into nokron the eternal city so if you want to you can then head on down and do some stuff in nokron although it's not required for the main storyline after you've done all that and you're happy with your progression head on over to volcano manor essentially the path that you'll have to follow to get to volcano manor is kind of follow this pathway just here head on up across a rock jump over there, jump over there, then there'll be a bridge that you have to follow. You then have to go up onto the top of a mountain. There is a crater just here with a boss in it called the Falling Star Beast. You could either choose to fight and defeat the Falling Star Beast in this crater, or you can just skip it and jump over the side of the mountain down here, and then just follow this around until you eventually get to Volcano Manor. Once you get inside, do all the bits and bobs inside of Volcano Manor until you eventually get to the area boss, which is Rykard. You then fight and defeat Rykard to get his great rune. So far, so good. So we defeated four demigods so far and got all of their great runes. We defeated Rykard at Volcano Manor, Renala at Rhea Lucaria Academy, Godric at Stormvale Castle, and Radan at Kaelid. Once we've done all that, we can then head back to the capital city. So make sure to head to this section and this capital rampart site of grace and like i mentioned before if you haven't defeated it already there will be a draconic tree sentinel just outside once you're happy with all the bits and bobs that we've done so far you then head on into the capital city this place is called Lanedale. there's quite a few bits and bobs that you can do in the capital city and it does go very very deep underground as well essentially with Lanedale, what you'll need to do is head on down to this main road section that you kind of see in the middle of the city once you're down at the main road, you'll then kind of see a gate at the side. So head through that gate kind of in this direction, follow this up, and then eventually you'll get to a giant stone dragon. You'll be able to jump on and climb up the dragon's wing. After you've climbed up the stone dragon's wing, you basically just keep on climbing up, making your way upwards, climbing up tree branches and things like that. You'll kind of head in this direction, and then eventually you'll fight a golden projection of Godfrey. So fight and defeat a golden projection of Godfrey, and then you'll make your way up to the queen's bedchamber. Keep on following that forward, and then you'll get to the base of the Erd tree. You'll have to fight a boss at the base of the Erd tree called Morgoth. Once you've fought and defeated Morgoth, you'll then get access to the mountaintops of the giants. What you'll need to do to get to the mountaintops of the giants is from the main road of Lanedale, you'll want to follow that across upwards and then kind of northeast follow this path in around kind of like climbing upstairs and stuff along the way and eventually you'll get to this section at this point just follow this bridge across until you get to here and then go northeast keep on following this path north until we eventually get to the grand lift of rolled basically we get a key item after defeating morgot at the base of the Erd tree that allows us to activate the grand lift of rolled and now we are at the mountain tops of the giants which is this section just here basically the snow covered area and then what we'll do is kind of like head northeast across this section through here until you eventually get to the freezing lake site of grace from the freezing lake you kind of want to head southeast ish watch out for a giant ice dragon that will pop up just here technically speaking you can fight the ice dragon or you can just run past and completely skip him keep on following this around south and then down until we eventually get to the foot of the forge site of grace just past the foot of the forge you'll fight a boss in this section which is the fire giant who is a bit of a beast he's got a massive amount of hp so be careful like i mentioned before i do have a boss guide for the fire giant i have a boss guide for most bosses in this game once that's done you would head northeast ish until we get to the forge of the giants this bit is quite critical and quite crucial because we do take an action here that does massively progress the main storyline of the game. And what I will say is after you've taken that critical action at the Forge of the Giants, 
is it will massively change the capital city. So make sure to do all the bits and bobs that you need to do in the capital city first before taking the action at the Forge of the Giants. When you're happy with all that, then go to the Forge of the Giants site of grace and take the action. Once that is all done, the game will then teleport you over to this crumbling Farum Azula. And essentially you'll just need to go through this entire area until you get to the area boss which is located just here. You kind of just follow this round in like a clockwise motion until you eventually get to the boss. The area boss is Malaketh the Blackblade. Once that is done, the game will then teleport you back over to Lanedell the capital city. But this time the capital city will be changed and will be different from what it was before. At this point in the main story progression, you're pretty much at the end of the game. You'll need to head to the same place where you fought Morgoth before, but this time you'll be fighting Godfrey the first Elden Lord. After you've defeated Godfrey, you'll then have access to actually get inside the Erd Tree itself. So what I recommend doing at this point is before heading inside the Erd Tree itself, is just going and exploring, doing any side quests that you want to do, and generally just wrapping up any bits and bobs that you want to finish off. You do also have the option of going to a completely optional area if you want to, and this area is actually really cool. It's the Halig Tree located at the north of the map. I'd actually recommend checking out the Halig Tree optional area before finishing off the game. This place is absolutely awesome. To get access to the Halig Tree, you'll need to go north across this consecrated snowfield, but to get access to the consecrated snowfield, you'll need a hidden medallion, which will activate the Grand Lift of Rold in a different way. With the medallion, you've guessed it, you do indeed need two halves of it to get cracking on. One half of the medallion is at this castle, Sol. You'll need to complete this castle and defeat the boss to get one half of the medallion at the end. And then the other half of the medallion is kind of hidden in a village, which is underneath this cliff. This section is kind of like at the southwest of Lyernia of the Lakes. So with this section here, you can actually go underneath or on top of this massive cliff. What you want to be doing is if you're going for that second half of the medallion is head into this village, which is actually located underneath the cliffs. So what you'll need to do is head down into the lakes and then head underneath the cliff until you eventually get to this village. You'll then kind of like find a glowing up pot. So attack that and you'll get the second half of the medallion from an NPC. Once you've got both halves of the secret medallion, you can then activate the Grand Lift of Rold in a different way, which will take you over to the consecrated snowfield. Head through the snowfield until you get to this town. You'll then need to solve lighting a torch puzzle, which will activate a portal. You can then use that portal, which will teleport you over to the Halig tree. Like I mentioned before, this area is completely optional, but it's really cool and it's got an awesome boss at the end of it. The area boss of the Halig tree is Melania. And in my opinion, Melania is probably the hardest boss in the entire game. She is definitely a very spicy meatball. And although she is an optional demigod, I would highly recommend having a go at the fight. Other than that, when you're happy with everything that you've done, just head on inside the Erd Tree, defeat the last boss and finish the game. There's loads more video game tutorials, boss guides and walkthroughs on my channel. Some videos have just popped up right now. Feel free to check them out and give them a click. I've covered loads of games such as Elden Ring, Sekiro, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, Neo 2, Ninja Gaiden and loads more. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.